So I've got a set of new rings here, and I can just tear the pack open. There's paperwork on here that gives me uh, an understanding of which ring is top and which is bottom. Then for the oil rings, um, you have the spacer, and then the two oil rings themselves, they don't have a top or a bottom. Um, they can go either way and then uh, the spacer just goes between them and uh, but the compression rings do have a top and a bottom and they are labeled on the top there's uh, a little R here and then another little mark on this one that's uh, 2R and so you know, for this particular set this one is the top but whatever set of rings you're using they'll have instructions like this just follow them and make sure that you're putting the right ring in the right place because the uh, you can't see it with your naked eye really but the profile on these is different between these two rings and it makes a difference how they meet up with the cylinder wall so um, the order from bottom to top matters and then what also matters is the orientation of the gap we try to stagger these gaps all around the perimeter so that they're not all lined up with each other. And uh, the service manual has a uh, diagram that shows how these gaps should be positioned. Um, I'll put that up here. Uh, but essentially, you've got you know the top of the piston. This is the exhaust side out, and you want to put the spacer gap here then one of the oil ring gaps to a 45 degree angle from that and the other one a 45 degree in the other direction then for the uh, second um, compression ring the lower compression ring that goes 45 degrees off here and finally the top ring the gap should be over here so that's what I'm going to do. So I start with this uh, spacer. I want that to end up smack dab at the front. And that's a pretty easy guy to put on. Boom, boom, boom. There I am. And I've got these two oil holes I can use to center it. So then 45 degrees off of that is going to be over this way. And you know, this doesn't have to be exact but try to get it and then uh, grab these gently but you gotta try to finesse it down and just know that they're brittle and if you try to bend them too much laterally they're gonna break on you Very gentle grab there. Okay, so now I've got the um, spacer gap is lined up right off the front. Then I've got this lower ring gap 45 degrees off to the side, which, you know, is about right here, frankly, right on that line where the this cutout comes off of the skirt on this piston. So that's a nice place to line up. Where did I just lose my, there it is. Sometimes this little screwdriver can help to turn things where they need to go. There we go. All right, so I've got that one where the spacer gap is here and the um, bottom ring gap is here. So now the next ring gap on the oil ring I'll put over on this side.
Okay. A little too far over. There. Bing, bing, and bing. Then number two, where are you? It's this one, and you want to make sure your marking is up. Number two goes off to, um, let me see, I can't remember now. To this side, that's right. And I'm going to use these snap ring pliers to help me. Let's get this started. There, I got them actually into the top ring. So I just need to go down one more. Got my bottom compression ring in and that's off to a 45 degree angle this way so last one is the top ring and we're going to go 45 off this way and again marking up Boom. And that's in. So we got you off there. Top. Second one down. Um, one of the oil ring spacers. The other, or I'm sorry, one of the oil rings. The other oil ring. And the spacer gap. And then I'll do the rest. Okay, so we're getting ready to put the pistons onto the tops of the connecting rods. And that's going to mean pistons down on the top of the connecting rod and the connecting pin coming through. And where does that pin go? Well, the two journals on each piston. I'll grab this one. So one here and one here. And so those are tight tolerances where you could have friction. And then, of course, inside that connecting rod. And they're not going to see any oil when we first start this engine up uh, for quite a few revolutions until the oil pump can catch up. So we've got to put something to lubricate this initially. And uh, what we want to use there is some assembly lube or uh, engine assembly lube. And I just put a little bit on a uh, clean paintbrush that I have around. There we go, and of course I can get it all over the paint. I'm just going to go ahead and put some of this on both of these that are up right now. There we go. These two up, and same thing. Doesn't take much, it's real sticky. There. So now I've got all four of those. Now it's time to. Uh, close to top dead center. And now I got to do each of the pistons. As I handle these pistons, I'm going to try to keep from moving those rings because they rotate quite easily. And I want to make sure that I'm keeping those gaps um, you know, in their 
proper positions. So he's being careful. And so now I've got piston number one. And by the way, I did keep track of you know which position each of these pistons was in the whole time I was uh, building this or cleaning them. I got that right. Yeah, this is the side without the pin in it. Okay, pin is in, and now the snap ring. That piston is lubed and on its connecting rod. And I'll do the same all the way down. side so I can see. There we go. Pin is in. Now the snap ring. There. Back in. One to go. Okay, we got four pistons in here, which is pretty exciting to have that you know, going in the right direction now, back together. I uh, just wanted to point out arrows pointing forward on all the pistons. Eh, hard to see that one. And, um, now I'm just going to go back and uh, reconfirm as I've handled these that I haven't moved or turned those rings so that the gaps are off. Uh, we want to make sure we keep those gaps where they belong. So I may have disturbed them some in, in mounting them on the connecting rod. So we'll recheck that at this point. Okay, so um, next step is the part around the piston rings, the cylinder, and uh, which is a really funny way to think about it. But um, we're going to hone out these cylinders so we get a brand new clean surface. There's a bit of a carbon ring at the top here that needs to be um, well, broken up and removed. I don't want to remove a lot of material here. We're not boring this oversized, but we do need to refinish that surface so that these rings can really set into it. And we're going to use a uh, four inch cylinder hone. 
Um, you can also use a ball hone, which looks like a big bottle brush with uh, a bunch of these little round stones on the end of it. Um, but my understanding, and this sure makes sense to me, it's logical, is that if you have an uneven surface on your cylinder wall and you put this flexible uh, bottle brush in there, um, it's not going to correct those uneven spots. Um, whereas something like this will first shave down the high points until they're the same as the low points and make everything the same point. Uh, so that's why this is a better design. Um, so let's get this thing undone. I may go uh, finish this job on another day, so I may change clothes here, but next step is to uh, put this thing in a drill and start resurfacing the inside of this uh, cylinder. Around the base of each of these cylinders is an O-ring that uh, if you don't look carefully, you'll miss it. This one I broke. These do come in the uh, new gasket set. I'm using this really fine point dental pick to get them out. They're very well compressed in there and it's not easy. I was really needed some finessing out of there. I was picking and pulling at the same time. And they came apart in sometimes small pieces. So I've got all four out now. I'm going to get this gasket surface all cleaned up. So I've got to clean up all of these fins and get in between there. And of course my normal tool is a, a toothbrush, but it's just far too big. Um, what I'm going to do is cut off the bristles on this thing and make them shorter so that I can fit in there better um, because the number of bristles is these are just real effective for these small places it's still a bit tight it'll get in there just fine but we'll see might have to come up with a different brush Okay, so I'm back out here um, making a little bit of progress. I have to apologize. The quail, uh, you know, took a weekend ride up and back. I've been working on editing uh, in the mornings and evenings, uh, just chipping away here and there. And that quail video has taken a lot of editing because it's uh, there's just a lot of different things, little clips to show. So, anyways. Um, that's what's taken me so long to get a video up and to get back to the CB550. I've actually been working on the CB550 in between there, but of course you guys don't see that until the video is uploaded and complete. So, um, you guys want to do a YouTube channel of a build on a motorcycle, uh, just figure out how long it's going to take you to do the motorcycle build and then triple the amount of time uh, to account for the video uh, taking the videos and then editing it all and uploading it. Uh, anyway, so what I've been doing is cleaning up the uh, cylinders now and uh, you know back to my toothbrush um, I shaved down this one toothbrush and but that still can't get in a lot of these tight spots and so I've got a um, little brush The this is actually the largest from a set of um, paint gun cleaning brushes from Harbor Freight and uh, this gets in those grooves pretty well. Uh, this is taking me quite some time but with kerosene uh, I'm able to loosen up all of this black stuff and get it pretty clean and then uh, I rinse it away with the uh, parts cleaner or carb spray and uh, that's what we're doing. So I'm getting this all cleaned up and then I will hone the cylinders and hopefully get this thing edited and put back up. Okay, 
So I've got my cylinders up here in the vise. I've uh, put some couple layers of tape here to protect the vise. I, I have not cramp, or, uh, clamped down on this so hard that I'm um, damaging that gasket surface. Uh, but it's in there firmly. And then the other thing is uh, I didn't clamp down here where I'm just on fins. I made sure I was up, you know, far enough on the head to, uh, or on the cylinders, to be into some solid metal there. And otherwise I run the risk of putting pressure on it and just cracking off some of those fins. So didn't want to do that. Um, oil. I'm not using you know, regular motor oil, but uh, um, this I'm going to use Marvel Mystery Oil. The oil here uh, is not so much a lubricant as it is to help clean away debris from the stones, and that's why you want to use uh, a thinner oil like this and not a lubricating oil, but uh, you know, this thin Marvel Mystery Oil should work pretty well. And, um, it's going to make a bit of a mess, but just get some in there, squeeze my hones together, and get them in, and then uh, I want to get a nice crosshatch pattern here, and I uh, should cover up some of this stuff because I'm going to have a mess going. And well, there we go. This is going to be a little overspray, I'm sure, not much. And um, as I'm spinning the drill, I want to go in and out. But I don't want to go out so far that uh, you know that the stones ride up like this because then I'm just wearing on that edge. So we don't want to come past maybe about here, and you know same thing on the other side. So I'm really um, going from maybe here to here. So it's only about a two-inch travel that I'm doing or less, and uh, the speed you know you'll have to get the feel for it. Um, here we go. We want to make sure that we're trying to go straight and you know not at an angle. So we try to be conscious of this axis and this axis. Okay, definitely getting a nice pattern there, and I've certainly cut away this uh, carbon ring that was right here. Let's see if I can show you what, what I've accomplished here. It doesn't take long. No, this camera always struggles with close-ups. But, you know, you can see we went from that. Let me grab a light. So we went from that to that. And I'm just trying to break the glaze and put a nice crosshatch pattern in there so that the new rings can set into that and uh, that they can pick up the oil and get filled with oil and, and as those rings seat to this new surface you'll get a nice seal and good compression. So I'll keep going on the rest. So now I just want to get those cleaned out. Get all of that debris. And essentially I'm going to keep rubbing and cleaning and putting clean oil in here until uh, until I put a clean paper towel in and it comes out a clean paper towel. So there you have it. Okay, so what I didn't show you a lot of was more of what's in past videos, cleaning, the pick, uh, the dental pick, the uh, uh, brushes, the kerosene, the, the little um, uh, spray gun brush. Um, but we've got this thing cleaned out now, even in all of those fins, um, sprayed with parts cleaner. Uh, I'm going to do some more parts cleaner just to make sure after I get the uh, 
and then I'll oil up these cylinders and tape off all of the gasket surfaces and uh, it'll be time to paint this and painting will go much like uh, the outside of the engine although I'm going to go with a different color on the cylinders. Uh, we're going to have a silver engine with black cylinders, uh, black heads and then I think I'll have some uh, natural aluminum accent on the edge of the fins on the heads. So at least that's a plan for now. So that'll be a wrap for this video. Um, moving right along. And what's next? The head. We'll get into taking the valves off that head and, uh, you know, grinding the valves, get new valve uh, seat seals put in there. I'm not going to grind, uh, what do you call it, boring or uh, porting the head. Um, I'm going to keep this stock. But uh, it's only 550, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm not building a race bike. I'm building something that'll be fun to ride and look good and be my expression of a cafe racer on this bike. And who knows, if I did another one, I might have a completely different expression. That's the fun of all this. So uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, if you like these videos, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit like. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.